Okay, friends, let's start our placemat project off with this super cute little riser we're going to make. Now, I had gotten this cute little, it looks like a frame, but it's like a chalkboard thing from Dollar Tree. And then this placemat came from Walmart. So we're going to take, obviously, plastic off of our little chalkboard situation and then we're going to open it up and I'm going to take the backer off and we're going to get the chalkboard out of there we're going to save it don't worry we'll use that for another project another time but for this one we don't need it for right now so we're going to take that right out then we're going to use that backer that we have on there we're going to first take off the um, hardware and I'm just pulling it off yes it messes up the board but it's okay because all we're going to do is take a sanding block and sand it and it makes it nice and smooth and it's fine. It's fine. No worries. And it's going to be on the back, so nobody's going to see it. All right, so then I take that backer, and I'm going to position it onto our placemat. Now, figure out what, you know, this one is so pretty. It's got lemons. I'm obsessed with lemons, and I don't know about you. Even if it's fall and cold, I still love me some lemons for de decor stuff. So just figure out what uh, lemons you want on your little riser and all I'm doing is using a sharpie and I just trace our backer on that ta-da and then we're going to cut it out easy peasy ta-da there you go perfect right now we're going to put that into our little frame now you could leave it just like this but you know I can't because I love the primitive vibe and the you know farmhouse country thing so I am painting the frame all of the gold parts with some white chalk paint again this is optional you don't have to do this part but let me just say super fun um just to let you know this frame thing is like plastic it's not wooden it's not metal it is plastic so giving the if you're going to do this I would have done this had I thought about it maybe sanding it a little bit so it takes the paint a little bit better but there it is let it dry fully and then once it's dried I'm going to take a sanding block to it because yes I want the primitive vibe and look at how oh my gosh it looks so cool so cool because if you sand it enough you will sand off the gold and it'll be black black underneath and so I don't know I just loved the mixture of the white and the gold and the black I just thought it looked so cool but again you don't even have to do this part if this isn't your thing don't do it this is your project you get to do it however you want I did do the sides as well just because I thought it needed a little bit more um again I went a little crazy pants. That's okay. You know who I am. You know I'm going to go crazy pants every time, every chance I get. But look at how pretty, right? And so here's the other thing. I was going to glue that placemat onto a, that backer, but then I had this like thought like, wait a minute. What if we just put it in regular and then we could interchange it according to the season or our decor? So that's what I did. I just put it on the backer and then we just move those little things over and ta-da, now we have one that we could actually change out per our desire. Look at how cute it is. You could use it, by the way, as just like a, a little framed piece in your kitchen or whatever, but I'm going to use it as a riser. So I have these one inch wood beads. These were from my stash that were like garbage. So I'm just repainting them with that same white paint, let it dry, and then I just sanded it. You could distress them if you want. You can paint them different colors. Um, and then I just glue them to the bottom of that backer. I did glue it so that you can still move those little backer hooks. And ta-da. What? I know, right? It's so cute. And then I can't wait to show you what else we're going to do. So stay tuned for more placement projects. So much fun. Okay, on to our next project that we're going to use placemats for. This one, I'm using some sign that I got from Dollar Tree. So here's a placemat that we had used. We had gotten it from Walmart. That's the project we first did. Adorable, right? But we still have more of this placemat left. So this little sign, I'm just going to take the backer off. They're just in there with staples. So I'm just going to pull those jute and wood beads off and we'll have three little squares now could you do four sure but this only had three and i was okay with it so i'm just going to take each of these and i'm going to trace it with a sharpie onto our placemat you don't have to use a sharpie by the way you could use anything but a sharpie is nice because it doesn't 
smudge um, once it's dried and it'll stay on there and I don't have to worry about where the lines are. But I did this for each of them. And again, map out, you know, according to whatever the picture is, where you want to have um, your your image cut out. And then I just cut them out. Now keep in mind, this placemat is double-sided. So you could decide, you know, you could cut these out. And like me, I decided one of them, I'm like, you know what, let's flip it over and have it be the, um, the check for one of them, which is super fun, right? Yeah, it is. If I had done four, I would have done two check, two lemons, but whatever. But there we go. Adorable. And see, this is the second side. So here we have our little um, squares. I'm going to pull off. It's just paper. I'm just pulling it off. Easy peasy. Now, could you hot glue this placemat to this? I suppose I tried and the hot glue got really lumpy. So I'm using some of this. Um, this is a heavy duty glue. It is one that I can use because of my allergies. Um, so this one worked for me. I put a I don't want to say a, a big amount on, but I put that on and I actually spread it out and then let it sit for a moment. Then I put on my placemat. I wanted it to get kind of tacky so that it didn't slide around so much and it didn't take so long to dry. And then I trim off any excess and then there you go. And here I'm just showing you how I did it. Um, this is that um, heavy duty glue that I had gotten. And again, I spread it out. I let it sit for just a moment. So it got a little bit tacky, dried just a little bit. And then I added our placemat. Now we're not going to stop there, friends. You could, but I also got some adhesive back cork from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to trace, same situation that we did with the placemat earlier. We're just going to trace the image or our little squares on the backer and cut them out. Now I didn't cut them out perfectly because you know I can't cut a straight line. I wish I could. <laughs> I can't even I can't even trace a straight line. <laughs> so I take the ba the backer off of our cork, put it on the back. Um, I just rolled some paint over it just to make it so that it's on there. And then I'm if you have any excess, you just cut it off and look at stop it. Like, look at these coasters are adorable. And then we get our little riser and it could be a little container for our coasters. What? I know, right? How adorable is that? I love it. I love it so much. Okay, friends, here comes another placemat project for you. This one, we're going to be using a placemat from Dollar Tree. And we're going to use a cookie pan. It's like a cookie sheet from Dollar Tree. And then I had these, um, they're just, it's hardware from, I can't even remember, it was dirt cheap, and some chalk paint. Now I'm going to start by prepping my pan by just sanding it and then wiping it down just so that it accepts paint a little bit easier. Now if you can use spray paint, friends, please do. That would probably be even better. But I can't because of allergies. So then I'm going to take the back of the pan and put it on my placemat. And I'm just going to trace the pan so that we can cut that placemat so it fits on the inside of that pan. And I'm just cutting it out. Easy peasy. Ta-da! Hooray. And we just want to make sure it fit. Yup, it did. We're good. So then I'm going to flip over my pan and I'm going to paint the back with two coats. I'm using Dixie Belle paint. The color is drop cloth, but you could use any, um, any kind of paint that you wanted. And again, so then... I did one coat. Let me back up. I did one coat, let it dry. Then I flipped it over because I remembered I needed to do holes for the um, handle. <laughs> so I put a little paint on that handle thing and then I at, put it where I wanted to put it on that. And then look, see, now we don't have to worry. We can have exactly where we need to be with our hole punching. I'm using a crocodile. Everybody always asks. It's a crocodile. Got mine at Michael's. Then we're going to do our second coat of paint on the back. You want to let it dry really well in between coats. There it is, nice and dry. Then I'm going to seal it with some dishwasher safe Mod Podge. Do you have to do that? Probably not, but you could even use a spray sealer if you're not allergic to that stuff. Then I'm going to flip it over once that's all dry. And I'm going to do the same thing on the front with the exception of I'm not doing the paint on the entirety of the pan. I'm just going around the corners and the inside part. Then I'm going, once that's dry, I did two coats on that as well. Once that's dry, I added a sealing coat of the dishwasher safe Mod Podge and then a nice amount on the inside. Then we're going to add our placemat to that. Look at how pretty it looks already. And no, friends, I'm not going to distress it. Can you believe it? I know. Write it on the calendar. <laughs> 
I made sure it was on there nice and smooth. And then I added my little um, handles. Again, you can get handles at Home Depot. You could even get them at ReStores. Or you could even find things that have handles and take the handles off. Stuff from Dollar Tree or whatever. These ones I have. I think I got these ones at Insane Deals. They were dirt cheap. They were like 99 cents for a huge box of them. So I just screw in the handles and stop it. Look at how... Come on, that's adorable. I love it. Oh, can you imagine? You could put little drinks on it or you could put, I don't know, anything you need a tray for, right? Oh my, I love it so much. And it was with a placemat? Yes, please and thank you. Oh, friends, are you ready for some of my favorite placemat projects? Oh, this one's so much fun. I love it so much. All right, so we start with a, this is an embroidery hoop. You can get them at Walmart, Michaels, wherever. And I also have these tapestry um, placemats from Dollar Tree. Um, I take the inside of our embroidery hoop, put it down, and then put our placemat on top of that. Center it however you want it in there. And then you're going to take the outside part of your embroidery hoop, making sure that that very top part is centered in the top, and then you're going to put that on, and you're just going to press it so that the fabric is encased in between the two, and there it is. Then I'm going to cut the excess placemat off. I'm leaving a bit of a an edge because what I'm going to do is add some hot glue, and I'm going to go around, and I'm just going to fold in that fabric just so that it's not sticking out. Now, I had thought when I was doing this, what I should have done was cut it even more, like leave more of an edge on it and then fray it. I bet that would have looked really cool, but alas, I didn't do it. Maybe you could if you do the project. That would be fun. But anyways, so that's what I'm going to do all the way around is glue and then just roll in that edge just so that it looks nice and neat. It's fine. And it doesn't look, see, it makes it, to me, it looks a little bit better in the back. So you don't have to worry about making the back pretty. And I did that all the way around. Ta-da, done with that. And friends, you could leave it just like this. This looks adorable. But then I decided, and let me be clear about something. I'm showing you the flowers here. I didn't use them. I was going to. I think I used some of the greenery, <laughs> but I didn't use the flowers. That's what happens when I craft. I start and then I'm, I change the plan often. I do have some of these yellow. It's from Michaels. They're just little florals. They were on sale really, really inexpensively. So I take two of them and I'm making a swag and I zip tied them together. Now, I probably should have thought through a little bit better because I should have just been attaching it to the hoop as I go, but it is what it is, right? We didn't. It's fine. Then I took some raffia, made a circle, pinched it in the center, and then just used another piece of raffia in the center and then um, just tied it. Easy peasy. Don't pull on it too hard, though, because, friends, you will snap it. I snapped mine. I was so mad. So mad. But it's easy enough to remedy. It's fine. But there we go. We have it tied in the center. And then I just fluff it up just to make it look like a pretty country bow. Then we're going to add our little swag. And you see, I did add some florals. I just used the greenery from them. And I actually just attached it to um, a couple of the pieces that are sticking off of the yellow florals. So... Then we're going to take another zip tie and I'm going to add that to our embroidery hoop. And I'm just using that little screw part. That's what I'm attaching it to. You do want to make sure that you cut off your excess um, zip tie. You don't want it to lay there. Lay there. You don't want it to just hang out there. <laughs> It'll look yucky. Then I took a little hot glue and put that on and I glued it to the very top. Um, and then I took a piece of... Um, jute and I went under my florals and then you know turned it over tied this um, jute in a knot and this is going to be our hanger I suppose you don't even need that because it's an embroidery hoop so you've got about a half an inch of a gap so you could hang it on something that way but you know I wanted to make sure we had a little hanger but look at how pretty it is what I love it oh I hope you love it too all right, friends, are you ready? This is my absolute favorite placemat project that I've done so far. I am so jazzed about it. I can't wait for you to see. So we start with these Dollar Tree placemats. They're tapestry, and I love them. We're going to cut just the edges off of, leave the top edge, but I'm cutting the edges off of the bottom and the sides, just so that it's not so bulky. And we're going to do that with both placemats. So you need two placemats for this. And... It was easy enough, honestly. It's tapestry, 
but it's not it's it's not complicated you're you're good you're gonna be fine so there's that all right so then i add my other um placemat so we're gonna put them together and we're gonna put them pretty sides out so that it's wrong sides together and we're going to sew it on the sides and the bottom. Now, this is where it gets like, oh, that doesn't sound right. Oh, but friends, what we're going to do is what's called a French seam. Do I do it justice? Probably not. <laughs> but this is the basics of how to do it. Now, when you put the two placemats together, you want to make sure that you're all square, right? You don't want one bigger than the other. So just trim them down so they're the same size, both pieces, right? And then you're going to put your clips on like I did here. And then you're going to sew, you're going to sew side bottom the other side okay then once you're done sewing that you're going to turn it inside out this is I know this sounds crazy pants to some of you but stay with me so you'll see here I'm really trying to get that seam that we did earlier I'm going to make sure to encase that with our clip and we're going to go all the way around each of the sides okay and then we're going to sew all around that that side that side that side right? Wait, I can't wait for you to see. Look it. So now it's all encased. So it's now finished on the inside and the outside. Is that not fun? Now you could be done right there with the French seam. That could be it. But I wanted to box my corners. So I did open it up and um, make little triangles at the bottom and just sewed across that. There it is. And hello, so cute, right? But we need handles, right? We can't just have a bag like this. That's crazy pants. All right. So I, my original plan was to use nautical rope from Dollar Tree. And friends, I can't even believe it. The one time I go to Dollar Tree for nautical rope and they had none. So we had to pivot and pivot we did. I bought some, <laughs> some dog toys. I know it's crazy, but it works. Um, I bought two of these and it's a nice soft rope. It's not hard or anything it's not plastic it's like cotton and i'm also going to be using seven sixteenths inch um what are they called <laughs> they're called grommets and you need the tool to go with that got those at walmart for the dog toys i moved the rope out of that ball and cut it in the center it is attached with like tape or whatever and then i unknotted the um the rope it is one continuous piece now look at this Oh, it's perfect. So now we have our eyelets or our grommets, whichever you call them. You want to make sure that you measure so that you have where they are supposed to be. I used a marker to mark where each of them should go. I did three inches in, one inch down. You do however you want. Then I used my crocodile and popped a hole. You could use scissors if you wanted. And then you're going to put your grommet in, then flip it over, and you're going to put the this is the tool on the back that I just put on there. And then you're going to put the, one of the pieces is like, it has like teeth on it. You want to put that on top on the inside. Okay. So there's my tool. We're going to put our little grommet on top of that. And then you're going to put the other tool, short part into the grommet, long part, you're going to smack with a hammer. I happen to use this little sledgehammer because I'd never used it. And I figured, why not try now? And there it is. And now we have a grommet hole and I am there for it. We do that for both sides. Beautiful, right? I know. And then I'm going to just put that down and mark where these are to do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be complicated, friends. And you're going to do same song, second, third verse, third, fourth verse. Sorry. <laughs> And there it is. Next, we're going to take our rope that we did earlier and we're going to put it through the hole. I'm going to knot it. And I'm going to leave like four inches long uh, of a tail because let me just say this, friends. This stuff, when you unravel it, it frays and it makes it like a tassel and it is so pretty. I love it. So that's what I did. I cut the end off because it had tape and then I just unraveled and, you know, used a comb on it. And I did the same thing for the other side. You're just going to do the same thing for each of the holes, right? You're going to make two bag handles. This is the first side. And then you do the same thing on the other side. And friends, I am so excited. I can't even tell you what a cool little shopping bag this could be. This could be a great gift bag. Come on, it is so pretty and it's durable and just quit it. And it was at a Dollar Tree placemats. I know, I'm so happy. Anyways, friends, thank you so much for watching and I hope this inspires you. Thank you.